All right, what is up you guys? I'm so excited about this video. We are continuing the deep clean series. In my deep clean pursuit, I decided randomly to redo our powder room. I wasn't loving the vibe. I wanted a bolder, darker wall, so we went to town. I took off all the frames that, I, you know what, we've had them since we moved in. They were time to go, we donated them, and we needed a fresh, clean slate. So I took on a project, I got some products off of Amazon, I will share everything with you guys, and I just wanted to spruce up the powder room on our main floor. So, I mean, I'm gonna take you through the whole thing. It's gonna be an adventure and I hope you're ready. So we made our way to Home Depot and I'm not gonna even pretend to be an expert, this just really worked out, but these are the two colors that we got. So I figured I would do a base of a really dark warm gray and then a nice olive green. Those are the two colors we got. I wanted to do a textured wallpaper, but it was just so overly expensive, especially for a powder room. So we went and got some paint. We definitely did not need this much paint, but you know what, at least I'll have extra. Fun fact, it was my first time buying paint in a store. Ridiculous, I know, I'm not a full adult. So I also needed to patch some holes, so I got some spackle to do that. I just got this pink spackle that it dries white whenever it's ready to be sanded down. This I actually knew how to do. My dad taught me how to do this when I was younger, so I wasn't going in blind on this patched all the holes and then we were ready for that to dry up and then start painting. So what I did is I stirred up that dark gray color which is called peppercorn, so good. And it looks way lighter on camera and in the tin than it did on the walls which was perfect because I wanted a really dark backdrop. So I actually wiped off all of the tiles on the wall. By the way, if you ever do a deep clean, do that. Wipe down your walls. It's actually alarming how much dust, cobwebs, and things accumulate. Insane. So then just by freehand, I did the edges. I didn't tape it off. I actually love to paint, so I knew what I was doing there. Edged off the sides of the entire room so that I could just go to town with the roller after that. So the color showed up really dark, which alarmed me at first, but I knew what I was doing-ish and it just worked out. Little tip for you, if you're painting a powder room and you need to get behind the toilet, you can actually tape the stir stick that you can get for free with the paint, you know, like the, the wooden stir sticks. Tape that to a sponge and you can actually get behind the toilet. Just a little tip for you, because there's no way that roller is gonna fit back there. So it looks a little bit warmer on camera. I do wanna forewarn you, it is so hard to pick up the paint color and the texture in this video on camera. I'm gonna do my best, but it was lovely, it depends on the angles, I guess. So it was definitely a little bit cooler than this. I feel like this looks more brown than gray, depending on where you're watching this and how you're watching this. But all I did is I played some Encanto, I played some different TV shows, I ended up watching Lost again for the millionth time, and I just enjoyed myself. It was actually very peaceful and relaxing. So once the parameters of the room were done, it really didn't take very long to roll everything out. And I'm pretty sure I just did one coat because Technically, this is just the base for the texture to go on top. And then I just went through where the toilet paper ring holder is, and then I did the corners after that. Like, it really wasn't a big to-do. And in this, I also decided to do the ceiling. <laughs> Which, I mean, once I'm in a project, I just keep going. So I actually had a step stool handy in the house. I mean, if you're gonna take on a project like this, you might need it. I did just a little kind of square around each of the pot lights and then I went in after just freehand for those. Not difficult at all, if, especially if you use like a nice fine little brush. Told you, I was watching some movies, kept me company on my iPad and I just had my own little zone in the powder room. The other thing I did just to deep clean, look, this filter was so dirty, especially especially after blowing out our vents. If you saw the other deep cleans that we did, we blew out all the vents, cleaned out all the ductwork. This needed to be cleaned out. I saw that when I was painting, I was like, oh no. So I just unscrewed that and went and cleaned that in the kitchen. So I decided to paint every single wall, obviously other than the tiled wall. So we have like a stone finished tile on the feature wall and I just went to town on literally every single wall, around the door, ceiling, and everything. So this is the green color that we got, and I bought these sponges off of Amazon in a pack of three. You can also get them at Michael's. So I really dried them off before I went onto the wall. I know that this might be stressful to look at, but I had a plan. I really wanted to be thick and textured, and you can't really mess this up. I mean, I feel like a kid could do this. And it gives that effect that I wanted with the wallpaper without paying the price of a fancy textured wallpaper. So you can see I went in with enough paint on the sponge and then I just kept pressing in and in and in, but I was really dabbing it. I didn't drag it ever so that you still got that textured finish. 
and I would keep dabbing it until the, the little sponge was dried up and then I would refill it with paint and keep going. Now this is where I was saying I don't feel like it shows up super well on camera at all. I mean, maybe if you like it, but this is not what it looks like in person. And I'm gonna try and capture it on the better camera so that you guys can actually see that. But this part was a work in progress, but it once I got the hang of it, it went faster and faster and faster. So I kind of just dabbed in little circles. Again, don't drag the sponge if you're doing this and you gotta keep that texture going. And I just kept going in little spaces, little circles right up into the corners. The corners and the nooks and crannies are definitely the hardest because you gotta get the sponge right up to the corner without it looking weird. The trick with that is just to not create a flat line. So, you know, go in and out and like let the, the curve of it kind of undulate so that it's not perfect. You kind of need it to be organized chaos as I always like to say. The coolest thing with this is if you messed up anything with the base, like the dark gray, this covers all the mistakes. Because of that organized chaos and the texture, it literally covers anything. So even, let's say, if I didn't cover those holes properly with the speckle, this makes it perfect. I just realized how many times I said speckle, and that is my favorite part in Encanto, fun fact. So getting close into the corners as well as behind the toilet is harder with the sponge. You can do it, but again, just don't create a straight line with it. Don't make it perfect. Behind the toilet obviously is just gonna stay that dark gray because I can't get my hand all the way back there with the sponge, but I did go as close to it as I could. And don't forget, it's a powder room. It's not like people are checking out the paint job. It's cool. So I did my best and I was so happy with how this turned out in at the end. Like once everything was dry, it looked so good. It literally looked professionally done and I was so happy. So you can kind of see it, but I don't feel like it picks it up that well. I feel like when I get close to it, you can really see how it is, but in person it's a lot darker. So the treasures I got on Amazon. So I got a cool um, toilet brush. I mean, how cool can a toilet brush be? But I just like that it clicks in and out and it stays covered and it can stay clean. I also got these under light, under desk, I guess, under counter lights. So they just charge with the USB, super easy. They, they still work to this day and this was months ago that I got these. So you charge them up and then there's a magnetic strip on them that you can stick to the under counter or the under your desk or whatever you wanna have them on. I mean, you could put this behind anything, you could put this behind a TV if you want. So that's the magnetic strip under the counter and it just doop, clicks on, that's the noise it makes, doop. And then that's the sensor there, that little light. So it motion sensors when you walk in the room. The other thing is you can dim it, you can do warm light, white light, you can do a combination of warm and light, which I like. So I figured out which one I like. I think I did half, yeah, I did half warm, half white, just so it looked clean with a touch of warmth and then I just doop, stuck that on there so whenever you charge it obviously you can detach it and look how pretty that is I, I loved that idea how it was just lighting up the underneath of the counter and it kind of features the stone wall a little bit too so kind of cool too if the lights are off in the powder room and you want to walk in there at night you don't even have to turn the lights on so it's perfect if you have kids or I mean it's just such a cool idea the other thing I got off of Amazon was this ladder shelf I wanted to have like a little feature ladder shelf to go with the vibe of the dark room and really make it like botanical and very bohemian so I figured on this shelf which would just lean against the wall I would have just a bunch of plants on there I mean I was going with the flow as we were building the room it's it's and by we I mean me so this is how that shelf turned out love it and then I just had to fill it with stuff and I didn't like how there was nothing next to the toilet so I had to fill that void space and I feel like this really worked out so I had this incense holder that I had gotten you can kind of see the texture a little bit better I feel like you can see it way better when you're up close and you can kind of get what it looks like and then we had to still clean out that vent that just stayed on the counter crazy how dusty and dirty that was so cleaned all of that up dusted the rest of the room also but you know, it's not a good deep clean unless we show the before and after and the satisfying moments of the dust and grime going away. So I popped that vent back on now that it's sparkly and white and clean, amazing. And then I had this little eucalyptus mint candle. I was just trying to accumulate treasures to put onto that shelf. We had to make a trip to Michael's, so you're a part of it. So we went to Michael's, went into like the greenery area and I got these three little pieces. They still have this and they're probably on sale right now too, which is awesome. And then I love the section where they just have the plain succulents that you can pick from. I also got the dangly succulents. I had done a project like this before where I got a bunch of dangly succulents and it worked out really well. This didn't even end up in that room. I thought I could find somewhere to hang that and I didn't, but I found a spot in my beauty room, so stay tuned for that because that's a whole other deep clean with me. So I have all these little succulents, which I love, and I got this trio jar at Michael's also. So I'm gonna show you the finished product of everything. 
All right, let's talk about the DIY. So this has been such a process and I'm so excited to finally say that I can actually turn the lights on in here. So that light back there wasn't working for the longest time. So this has been truly a full DIY. The wall texture was just, I hate to say it this way, but it was just an idea I had in my head and I had a feeling I could execute on it. And thank goodness it worked. So it does show up really weird on camera, but hopefully this camera can pick it up because it's basically like a really dark chocolatey gray. It has like a warm tone to the gray. And then we did an olive green on top. Andre and I are obsessed with green right now. So let me show you. And then I love the lights that I installed under the sink. Super easy. They're from Amazon and they're motion simulated or motion. Sim <laughs> you can tell that I love motion simulated motion censored. Yes, I love Disney. That is ridiculous, Angie. Okay, so let me show you. I love leaving just the light like that on. So we lit, that was a DIY project also. I'll show it to you. There's like a tape light behind the mirror and we switched it to the switch. Okay, let me show you these. These lights turn on when you walk in, right? Yeah. So they stay on for about, I think 30 to 45 seconds. You can set for how long you want them to stay on. And you can set the tone in which you, you can do like a warm tone or a cooler tone. I don't even know what I have set right now, but they're just under here and they're on a magnet. So you stick the magnet on there permanently and this comes off and it charges. And you can do the brightness and everything and they were not expensive and they come in a pack of two. So there's one under here and it's motion censored also. And so back here, the way that this, see how it lights the stone? It's so pretty, but it's actually just a little tape light back here. And I kind of just fastened to the back of the mirror. So the mirror is actually raised on just some wood that we painted black and then this little DIY number. You could do this behind a television or whatnot, like super cute. Okay, so a couple of the pieces of details that we got. I got these little succulent jars at Michael's. There we go, turn on the actual light. So I have this little candle that's really old from Bath and Body Works, super cute. Then these succulent jars are from Michael's and then I have this eucalyptus soap here. So kind of just like a little situation. I have this little basket and it was sitting on my desk and I didn't know what to do with it. Perfect. I don't know what I'm gonna put under there. Probably some towels. Yep, yep, that's it. We're gonna, we're gonna do this together. So these rolled, this was, not, this was not planned, I promise. So the toilet paper will just stay in this little basket alone because I don't feel like it can hold that much. And then I have these three rolled towels. These are just from Ikea, but they're really cute because they're a little gray line. And I just Googled, well, I YouTubed how to roll them properly. So this like this, oh my gosh, look at me go. You just witnessed how my brain works. That's cute, right? Cause that was kind of bare. So then that little, that little shelf unit, I got this shelf unit off of Amazon. I still need a pot for him, but you can't really tell, so it's fine. So I put, the palm tree up there, also from Michaels. This, um, I'll find where, I'll try and link it down below. These were from Michaels, I've had them for a while. Little succulents from Michaels. Oh, this is from our light switch. Angie. So I need to put something in here too. I don't know, what should I put in here? More towels? <laughs> napkins, oh, napkins. Spare napkins. So we don't really use towels for hands since it's a guest washroom, we do. I get these at home goods. They're like a cloth paper napkin and people can just throw it that way. It's a little bit more sanitary. So on this shelf, I was thinking of putting maybe some more napkins in here. And then I have this little succulent thing. So I actually just got the, the little vases on their own. It's like three, a set of three. And then I bought the succulent separately from Michael's. And then this basket was just a home goods find. My best friend got it for me. And then, oh, I just bought this, but I really liked it kind of like, that was a purchase. Okay, so let's talk about the wall. Yeah, it comes up really, really weird on camera. Like when I'm close up, that's what it really looks like. But when I back away, it, it almost makes the green super vibrant and it's not that vibrant. What do we think? All it is is just a sponge. You can get these types of sponges off of Amazon. I used one or two total to do the entire room. I rolled out the paint first and then I just kind of created the texture with the sponge. So it almost looks like a textured wallpaper, which was the idea. So you guys let me know what you think. This is the finished product of our little powder room that I, on a whim, decided to redo. Cleaned out that vent, I washed the walls down, we fixed our lights, all is good. So you guys let me know your thoughts on this little DIY project if you want me to embark on more and my motion-censored light. 
little project. I love it. I honestly love it. I think it's great. I hope you guys enjoyed the DIY projects and the adventures to Home Depot with Angie and the amount of time that I spent in this one room. I literally propped up movies. I watched Lost. I watched Encanto and I just went to town in here. I mean, there's a couple little touch-ups to do, but I'm pretty happy with it. I love the texture. If you guys like this, definitely give it a thumbs up. Let me know your thoughts down below. Please be kind. You guys always usually are, but I appreciate the love. And I'll see you guys next time. Make sure that you're subscribed. Bye dudes. Thank you.